Second year in a row, Raccoon uh, defies the odds. Sal? Yep. Marty? John? John, come on, guys. Mark? We came all the way from the Bronx to see you guys. <laughs> I'm close enough here. We'll keep walking to see. How long did it take you guys to uh, perfect that Bronx accent? I don't have Bronx accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have the Buffalo accent. We don't have the Bronx accent. I'm working on it my life, though. So. Sally. You may have the mic. <laughs> um, I want to thank you guys for coming out. I hope you enjoyed the movie. We've been doing very well on the film festival circuit this year. We've gotten a uh, nice, nice reaction to the movie. Yeah, Everywhere perfect. we go, you guys like it. <laughs> Crackoon has opened up a lot of doors for us, and this movie is just—we're we're really proud of it. Yeah. And, uh, like I said, Sal over here last time the microphone was taken away from him. Right. You sure you want to say it? Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> No, he was mad last time his mom took the microphone away. <laughs> <laughs> you did, you took the mic away from him. Oh, fight me. that great. But we're, 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 not speaking we're just very glad that you guys came out tonight. We traveled all the way from the Bronx today in rain, snow, and sleet. sleet. And we got up here. We're second year in Buffalo. We really like you guys, and we like the reception we got tonight. So yeah. thank you very much, guys. Thanks for coming. Thank you. We enjoyed being here. Ah, now. Oh, we're not done. Oh. <laughs> so, in the first movie, which we showed last year, uh, it was about the kid with the cracoon, and the kid was little, and then you did the sequel, and it takes place the next day, that's the subtitle, but I guess two years went by, so he was allowed Three years went so. by. We kept trying to tell him not to grow, but he wouldn't listen to us. We said, say that. We tried to him that flight, try to get him to try to get him to smoke and stuff, and we tried to get him to smoke, and he wouldn't do it. So, we told him, we told him, don't eat your string beans. Yeah. <laughs> I think you could say it's more of a reimagining. Standing up. Uh oh, uh, everybody, this is Mark Mikowski. Mark and Greg have known each other for a long time. As a matter of fact, we got to be friends with Greg. Well, I actually. Greg and I go back. I actually met Greg before years. I met you, I think, right? I think I touched base with you a couple of years ago when we first uh, met Greg. Nobody in that bubble of music or anything else at all. Sal was like second banana in the first movie, and now he's the lead, so how did that happen? Um, Why did it happen? <laughs> we, <laughs> we, 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 <laughs> we got to a lot of trouble because the first we had killed almost everybody. <laughs> and um, we, didn't, we, actually, we actually made the first raccoon as kind of like a goof. We got equipment, I wrote the script, and came, most of the people I showed the script to thought I was really crazy. And they go, get the hell out of here, kid. We didn't want anything to do with you. So I got my boys together, and we've all grown up together. We're from the same neighborhood. And we had musicians, actors, writers, filmmakers. So we said, let's make a movie. We made Crackoon. We thought it was going to be a movie we would just watch on Christmas, get drunk and watch the movie and laugh at it. But we had someone from New York Magazine in our first screening, and they put us in a night and saying we were, that, we were low brow brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, it's very funny. And all of a sudden after that, people's Crackoon became Crackoon. Yeah. We hooked up with Greg, we hooked up with Mark, who was a perfect. Mark has a real good, um, yeah. he, he, he has a good future in the film business. If he really wants to go about doing it. But yeah, with the help of Mark and Greg, Greg has been, Greg has been very good to us. We love Greg. Um, Greg is our publicist, Greg has put us out there, and I grew up watching Greg's movie. We're about the same age, so I shouldn't say that. But I, <laughs> we love Greg, and we love being here. We're just so happy that you guys like the movie. And uh, it's because I was their publicist that they are ineligible to compete for any awards. It's all right. We won Best Director in L.A. We got Best Director in L.A. Yeah. That was pretty funny. What festival was that? Um, it's, there's, a, there's a New York Film Festival that they have in New York City where we first entered. They also have one in L.A. There's like an LA version and a New York film. New York International Film Festival. So we won, we actually got best cult horror film in LA a couple of years ago. And we went out this we just basically went out there to show the movie and hang out and party. And we won an award. We're very happy about that. <laughs> yeah, we came home, I was at my in-laws house and I got a text saying you won best director. I was like, ha, that's funny. <laughs> And I called the boys up and said we won best director, and they said that's funny. And we here we are. We're in Buffalo. We've come all the way from LA to Buffalo to see you guys. Tell everybody about uh, Mama Millie. Oh, uh, Mama Millie is actually an extra. Oh, I like when you all are. Um, Cindy Dyer is um, nineteen whatever playmate. She, she was a playmate. Nineteen ninety-eight. Um, she was a nineteen ninety-eight um, celebrity playmate. She's also been in Psycho Cop. She was also in The Mirror Has Two Faces. 
And if you're familiar with those romance novels, the ones with Fabio on them, she's done about 1,400 of those. She's the girl on those <laughs> covers, the glamorous girl. And she was also on Celebrity Matchmaker. So, so we, we actually had a meeting Two people, two people died. I was supposed to play that part, and two yeah, stories. The first, role, first role. role, and I was gonna give it to my mother, who played the other old woman in the movie. But I didn't want to kill my mother because <laughs> I figured my mother would die just like the rest of them did. And Mark introduced me to Cindy, and Cindy is smoking hot. If you see, with, look her up on the internet. She's smoking hot. And when he introduced me to her, I said, "How the hell is she gonna play a seventy-year-old crazy woman?" And she came to the reading with no makeup dressed up with a babushka and a t-shirt, and she started talking this really ridiculous Bronx accent, which we don't have, by the way. But she started talking this really crazy Bronx accent, and we're like, oh, she is crazy. And she's become part of the crew now. We hang out in her restaurant, and she came to LA with us and took us to Robert De Niro's restaurant, and we made fun of Frankie Valley and a whole bunch of people out there. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, don't send us to a good fancy restaurant. We'll just fuck up. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, this is. Cindy, Cindy was very happy to be part of the movie. The, it, the hardest part was convincing her and Jerry that she could play a 70 year old. And it was like one of the things, there was just no way they were going to believe it. Once she starts, and then even Marty and John didn't believe it until she came to the table reading it. That sealed the fate. It was good to have her in there because she is a professional. She's professional, unlike us. She's very professional. Yeah. Now, Mark is not only a producer, but he's a special effects artist. And as a publicist, I had to gather quotes and send them out to promote this film before I'd seen anything. And I heard all this stuff about some high-tech animatronics. <laughs> Well, we sort of did an anime and animatronics. Now, do you care to discuss the high-tech animatronics, Mark? And you're on. <laughs> no, actually, what we did was we want Jerry's vision for it was always to be something more like Meet the Feebles, somewhere between reality and your suspension of reality. So we took the puppet models and we dug them out. My partner dug through them, put mechanicals, created claws for them. We put wires and cables with blood where we could push slime and KY gel, KY gel mixed with black blood for it. So when you see it opening the mouth, you see the blood. I mean, well, I was crawling under tables and everything, pushing. There was a lot of people running everything. those puppets, yeah. yeah. The, only, the funniest story about this is, the scene with the two women in the movie, Jerry got to animate with the puppets and everything. Well, I got to grab the breasts. Yeah. My Julio got to grab the guy's package. And he was in the car and he was going like this on the puppet, kind of like going like this on the guy's package. And I'm hysterical laughing. He goes, how come Jerry got to grab the breasts? And I didn't get to grab the nuts. He said, because I'm the right director. My partner was pissed off that he had to do the puppet. And we kept saying, grab it hard. Make it look harder. And if you really look at the cut, it's about 20 minutes of him grabbing that guy's package. We just did it to break his balls. If you know Julio, Pulley <laughs> don't say two words. He just <laughs> and then at the end he complained. He said, "How come yeah. Jerry got to play with them?" He said, "But he promised him next time he gets the breast. <laughs> he gets the breast next time." Stole the studio back. So I got to kill me. Now Sal, the line in the first one. one is, "No, it's a fucking yeah, raccoon." So now you've got the pressure on you. He's already a freaking star. He's not now talking. Now you've got the pressure on you where you got to look at the camera again and yeah. deliver a variation uh -huh. of that line. What was the pressure? To hit the cult nerve and oh, say there was no pressure. Right. No pressure. It was the same thing. <laughs> exactly the same way. Exactly. Same That's a pro, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> exactly. All right, who has some questions? Raccoon <laughs> guys. Questions? No, good. Just, just good looking story. gentleman in the back. Just the storyline question. Um, I never saw the first one. What's it with the raccoons and the kids? Like, why does it just leave the kids alone, basically? Um, I have a philosophy where I don't kill kids and old women in my movies. So um, we decided to, first of all, that was my daughter. I killed my wife in the first movie, put a lot of hell for it. So when it was time for me, when it was time for my daughter to be in the movie, my wife said, she's not going to kill my daughter, right? No, 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 I'm not going to kill her. I swear I won't kill her. I'm, I'm a firm believer in I'm a monster guy, and I like the monsters. I, when I was a kid, I watched the movies and wanted the monsters to win. So, you know, I watched monster movies and I'm like, at the end of King Kong, I cry. I'm like, why'd they kill that guy? You know, King Kong was cool. So, we're monster guys, so we don't want the monsters to die. I don't like to kill the monsters in my movie, which may change. But, yeah, we, we, we love kids too, and I don't think kids should be killed by monsters. And we, we, saw, we showed it in LA, and two girls in the audience started screaming, Don't kill the little baby! We're in the back laughing our asses off. Like, don't kill the kids. 
sick of whole children. Because they think we're sick and we're going to kill children, but we're sick in a different way. <laughs> Andrew, if, if I may answer your question, the boy finds the crack. The crack oh, that's what you want to know. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's basically a Willard Ben relationship. Yeah, he oh, finds a crack in the beginning, and oh, he's, he's an abandoned he's boy. He's a He's an abused kid who gets beat up by his parents. So he finds a raccoon, and at the end, the raccoon kills his parents for him. And that's why he's abandoned. Yeah. First movie, hopefully we'll get that out there too soon. We're talking about that too. So there's a lot of good things happening with us now. So we'll keep your fingers crossed. Hopefully we'll see raccoon by the end of the year. Two of them on DVD. So. Together, package together. Together, package together we're talking about. Yeah. I have a question. Well, it's not too personal, right? No. <laughs> we spent the whole film following Peter Rabbit's journey to becoming a good guy out to save the Bronx, we've got the kid and the raccoon, they never cross paths. Yeah. Is that is that part three? Do we have to get Peter Rabbit to confront the kid <laughs> we, and the raccoon? We have to actually wrote a script for part three, but we're doing something different for the next movie because I want to get out of the raccoon world for a little while. So we're doing this new movie, but I wrote a script, and the script I wrote will do all that. Address, address all that, but as you start at the end,